Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Bacteria Space Exploration. It's been a bit of a bitty time recently. I've been getting sort of little bits of things upgraded and improved, and there's just generally been a lot of well a lot of yak shaving to be honest, where I've been taking where I've been sort of going off and going, oh this needs such and such a thing, and then that, in order to get that done, I need to do this, then to do that, I need to do the other, and so on. It's it's just an endless stream of trying to sort of finding extra side quests, so trying to get one thing done, and that requires you to do lots and lots of other things. So it all started off with um, trying to get the biological science pack production up here running, and that means I need here I need the input of the uh, the various bits and pieces for it. So I've got the catalogs prevent potentially at least coming in here and we've got some extra bits and pieces coming in here so this is the this is the same design as I've used for all of the other science packs so as you can see we've got material here that's humming away happily we've got energy and we've got astro and they're all they're all working quite happily the, uh, the as you can see there's lots of the um, the input catalogs on all of these and so these are all pretty happy and we've got a decent supply of the um, significant data being produced as well so that's all good and if we look at this we can see that yeah, okay, there's still a few Material 1 being coming through, and that's because I'm researching something that presumably, yes, is using up those Material Science Pack 1s, so they need to be they need to be made in order to do that. But we've got a full full supply of um, Energy 1 and 2 and Astro 1 and 2, so those are all working really, really well, which is very nice. Biological, though, I got to about the point where I'd, I copied this in from from lower down and sort of got started what light um, linking things up and just getting everything piped in and so on and so this is all basically ready in that I've got the significant data coming in here um, I've got belts here that will bring in the um, the what do we call it the the catalogs and put them in for to be loaded in and and same up here with the with the other ones and with the science pack twos and so on but they also need well they need each one needs an extra sort of thing like that so uh, oh and the, the insights of course have to come in as well as well and they'll be produced here flow along this belt round here and onto the other side of the significant data belt so the significant data carries all of that heavy science based stuff but the thing is biological you require fairly complicated extra inputs and that's another that's a bit different from the other so you need vitamin lange extract for um for the first one which isn't too difficult that's just processed vitamin lange spice fine I've do, I've, that's equivalent to what I've been doing for other ones where I've been bringing in the ingots and then turning it into plates it's just one processing step it needs a bigger machine but it's still it's just one processing, processing step not too bad the thing is then number two requires bio scrubbers and that's vitalic acid and glass and steel so this is much much more complicated and to be honest there isn't really room for that in here because based on the designs I've done elsewhere you see we've got I think we've got system here turning the ingots into plates passing the plates along here and then turning the plates either passing the plates straight up here to be used I need some more machines doing this um, or turning them into in this case girders and that's a fairly simple process and the next one of those is fairly simple but this one is is a significant requires significantly more steps we need the vitamin lange extract we need sulfuric acid and glass there's a lot more inputs needed here so that's much harder and I think it just gets worse from then on then we need vitalic reagent which is requires vulcanite and the extract and and I haven't even researched that yet but then that's that's fine and then the fourth one is vitalic epoxy which is again large quantities of, of things so these are all a bit more complicated a bit more difficult so I thought rather than rather than ship producing them on site I'm going to put in an additional station here it's here it is and this is going to bring in things like the vitamin lange extract and the bio scrubbers and then eventually the um, the epoxy and the whatever the other one was called and then so we're going to bring those along these belts here um, and feed, and those are getting, then getting going to be fed in down here. So those need to be made somewhere. Fortunately, or fairly fortunately, I'm already making them in at least some quantities down here because they're required for, for actually making the biological science. So here, these machines across here are making the, the vitamin lange extract. So I've added in an extra load on that that's feeding into this station here. And then that'll fill up. In fact, it has filled up. It's got to 14,000. That's full. <laughs> so now... Once, once I get, once I trigger things, trains will start coming along here to pick that up and take it off, and that, and that, and that science should should basically be okay. So that's um, a little way off at the moment. The other thing I need is to have all of the the biological sciences being produced at the at the rate we need them to be produced at. Um, and at the moment, I've been going through and I've been putting in lots of extra machines. So I 
originally built all of this up with sort of one machine doing each each step of the process uh, and then I've now gone back in to look for the ones that are woefully under underrepresented <laughs> insufficient so here we go for example the, these ones this coming around this one's coming around here from this from this machine there aren't enough of those there aren't enough of the fire resistance data either which comes from here so I need to come along and put some more of these in as well and so the idea is I'm just going to come in and put in more and more machines until we get to the point where these input belts for all of the supercomputers are all full and everything's happy happy we also appear not to have enough vitalic acid coming through here to make the bio scrubbers bio scrubbers being made down here as I said and then being fed into a, into a station here we've only got 4,000 of those so that's not going quite as well um, and that seems to be because what's that run out of it's run out of it's run out of the vitalic acid, which has run out. Of, yeah, so we seem to be low on um, vitamelange extract, which is there's none coming down here. There's none being made because there's no vitamelange being fed in. So we looks like we've run out of vitamelange, and that's a weird thing to run out of, um, because that's supposed to be coming in by rocket in enormous quantities. And in fact, there's a load in here. So I don't know why there isn't a train bringing it. Um, oh, there is a train bringing it. Okay, it's just only just got here. Okay, so that, that, that's working. That's good. So that's pretty much where I've got to with the biologicals at the moment. It's working, but slowly. So if I look here, you can see that um, I've only got 736. So that's, that's the tier 2 catalogues. And only 979 of the tier 1 catalogues. 980 of the tier 1 catalogues. So these these are running rather slowly, but they are... They are running, so I just need to go in and solve all of the, the shortages that we're having. And speaking of shortages, one of the things that's been a problem for quite a long time is these memory cards. Um, <laughs> and yes, and there, there is in fact currently a shortage of those. Um, although there is a train picking them up at the moment, so there's been enough on the output for now. So what I've done to try and improve this is I've told this station to stop requesting um, copper and instead all the coppers coming into this one down here I put in an extra station and so we're unloading the copper onto the belt here and over here so in theory we should be able to pump twice as much copper through so that should increase the throughput and only having two components coming into this station should also increase the um, throughput because there'll be less of a problem with these the trains coming in here trying to trying to drop stuff off when there isn't when there isn't room and that does seem to have worked. Um, if we now look, if we look around all of the science production systems, you can see here there's, well, okay, this this one's actually empty, but there's a bit of backlog on the belt here. So eventually this will hopefully pick some up. Down here, <laughs> okay, there's a train bringing them in. So it's not quite as sorted as I thought it was. Um, here we've yeah just about got some, and over here we've not got any at all. Okay, this is. I take it all back, this is less fixed than I thought it was. However, a thing I have done in order to um, in order to help with this uh, quite a bit is for each of these stations, I've gone in, and you'll notice that this has stopped. That's because I've gone in and I've limited all of these chests now. So there's, okay, there were quite a lot more than I actually needed in there, and this is where all the memory cards have, got, have gone. But the plan was, I, I realised that there's no need to have all of these chests completely full. As long as there's enough in there for a train to come and pick them up, um, so 40, at least 40 stacks in there, um, then there's no point in stacking it up any further. So 6 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 is a bit over 40. So that should be enough. Now if I have throughput problems, if that, if that doesn't refill faster than the science area gets through it, then the problems are elsewhere. The problems are that I'm not producing them fast enough here, and I'll need to go in and put in more computers and more input and so on generally. But this means that once this backs up to here, this is going to stop using them up, which means that then this can back up. Once that's backed up all the way to here, we'll stop using the memory cards here. So we are gradually going to get to a point where we're going, where all of the extra facilities are going to stop pulling in memory cards. All, all of the facilities where it's not needed are going to stop pulling in excessive quantities of memory cards. So that's going to help a lot. One of the other things that's been suggested that I haven't implemented yet is to say forget the trains for this put in some rocket landing pads probably here for red circuits substrates and copper and just feed them straight in from there because then you don't have to worry about the trains at all you can pump it through as fast as you want and it make it even easier to add in an extra copy of this because it'll just be more belts coming straight from the landing pads and that is quite tempting it would 
it would probably solve the the problem quite effectively um and so i think i'm going to let this run for a little while and then see how that goes but that might well be the answer so we shall we shall have to see so as i say that's the um hopefully is going to hopefully the memory card thing is sorted just because we're not going to build quite as many up in the middle the other thing is i'm, I'm actually doing science at the moment and that and when you when you're actually doing science it means that there's there's the stuff here is being used and that means a lot of these memory cards are being released so every time you run these machines wrong mode again every time you run one of your um every time you make a significant data is that here yes here we go it actually spits out an additional 28 blank data cards because each of those insights has got a certain number of data cards inherently in it um each one is worth is apparently one data card so when you make your significant data due to the law of preservation of data cards <laughs> it spits out eight significant data and therefore has to put pass out the the other 28 data cards as just blank data cards that can then be reused also when you're making the significant data itself you're taking in um, two energy cat two catalogs each of which is worth four data cards and therefore you're producing six energy insights means you have to spit out two blank data cards so again you have an output of data of data cards from there and all of those can then be fed back around and, th and there's a train somewhere around here, or a station somewhere around here um, that picks up all of these here it is and then these can be picked up by a train there's only about 800 in the mo in over here oh I'm running out of electricity I need to put in some more solar panels um, yes yeah, so here we go you see these memory cards come in they get fed into the um, into the chests here they, they load up and eventually when there's 40 stacks in there which is quite a lot <laughs> um, we've got maybe 15 or so at the moment uh, once that gets up to 40 stacks a train will come along and take them away and, and, and recycle them into the into the rest of the facility so yeah it's um, it, it, it's sort of a, a process that goes round and round and I think there's a sort of each time I start producing a new type of catalog there's going to be a massive load put on the um, on the memory card production um, and then eventually all of the buffers will fill up completely, and then things will calm down a bit, and you'll be, and, and it will be, and it'll be, and it'll, we'll be able to build up a supply of uh, memory cards here in the station over on the other side where they're actually being produced, and so on. And then hopefully, if I can ever get to that point where I've got enough memory cards, it'll mean as I build out, as I expand out, it'll be a fairly sort of a, a gradual process where they get produced as fast as they get used up if that, if that makes sense so I think so hopefully then we'll be able to keep up but potentially in the meantime I'm just gonna have to start bringing stuff in by rocket and just say no this isn't working <laughs> it's, it's quite a big yeah quite a big deal so the other thing that I ran into while I this again was while I was doing the, doing the um, the biological sciences I discovered that my station over here that collects the contaminated bio sludge or the contaminated one of I think it's the bio sludge was filling up and the trains weren't coming out to uh, to pick up the the gunk the, re the the waste and take it away to the recycling station and that it eventually turned out was because they're all too busy desperately going back and forth to this material science place where we have huge quantities of scrap being produced um, and for example each time the each time this one runs it produces 1200 no 1500 scrap and that's that's crazy i mean okay it produces 25 data for that but that's still a lot of scrap for each data card it's producing and that all gets dumped out onto this belt goes down here floods up here and gets put into a train and we have the the recycling train and shuttling but almost endlessly back and forth here just trying to keep this down to a sensible level and this produces as I say a lot of scrap so that was almost completely monopolizing one of these trains so the answer to that is of course to put in more trains so I did that where is it yeah so I've now I've got this this thing over here where we have the trains queue up here and they're programmed to go to scrap pickup pick up as much scrap as they need then go to a waiting station which is these ones there's three of these built up at the moment on the on the, sort of the way in so the trains will then wait here until there's room on this station and trains will wait here until there's a scrap state a scrap pickup station that's demanding their attention so yeah I've got quite a lot of scrap stored here like there's 4,000 and so also scrap stored in these trains but as long and there's another train about to come back here as well but that doesn't really matter because as soon as this one goes off somewhere and is needed then this train can shoot down here 
come up into the station here. And there's the one that was picking up the stuff from the material science as well. So another 2,000 uh, scrap. And this train can then come in, here, um, come in here and unload. And then that one's ready to go off when it's required. A, a more traditional way to do this would have been to have the um, the trains waiting after they've emptied their, um, their, their their rubbish out. So they're all ready to go as soon as they're needed. And there goes another one. So... Um, but in this particular case, that didn't really work. There wasn't anywhere to put them, and I just thought, never mind. They can they can wait on the inside, full of rubbish. That it doesn't it doesn't actually matter. It's not going to cause any sort of real problems. And the other nice thing is that this this facility here is actually capable of keeping up with the uh, with the amount of stuff that's being dumped here. So as you know, these these trains come in with two thousand scrap each every so often. Um, and there we go, it's unloaded. There's only 2.3 thousand scrap in there, so 1,700 scrap was dealt with in the time the last between the last train and this one coming in. Um, we're down to 2,000 again, so it's, it's it's being pushed through and it's being processed reasonably nice, reasonably quickly. Um, so we've got here, we've got, as you can see, we've got one belt coming down here that's basically running almost flat flat out. In fact, um, in fact, it is running flat out, and we're able to deal with scrap at that rate with this huge number of recycling plants we've got here. And then these smelteries, these um, thermodynamic facilities are able to deal with all the stuff that comes out from there. And then, as, as I've said before, that gets fed into stations here. We've got one for stone, one for iron, and one for copper. And that just gets taken away. There are there are plenty of places in this in this space that are using up the uh, the supplies as fast as it's being made. So there's there's loads of space here. We don't we don't need to worry about this overflowing. Um, I did need to expand this area. This is the uh, the fluid um, reprocessing and recycling. So we've got this one at the top takes in the contaminated cosmic water from the train. It goes into it goes into these tanks. So it's pumped out of this one just to make sure there's always room for a train to unload to go into these two. And then from there it flows through and is processed by these machines. And these turn it into clean cosmic water which gets sent back out by train and, and reused in all of the uh, places that you use in cosmic water. And I think most of that gets used by the um, uh, by the memory card manufacturer because that's that's very cosmic water heavy and produces a lot of cosmic contaminated cosmic water and we also get tiny amounts of contaminated scrap and contaminated bio sludge the bio sludge gets fed down eventually actually sort of into these tanks here which also get loaded up from this unloading one from the from the scrap train and then it goes through these machines they turn it into uh mostly contaminated scrap uh why is it? oh sorry no that's that's the wrong one this one takes in the contaminated cosmic contaminated bio sludge produces contaminated scrap and clean bio sludge uh, the clean bio sludge gets passed out into these tanks and if these ever fill up that or if these ever get to a, a trains worth between them then it'll get picked up and taken away to the um, the bioscience area contaminated scrap wherever it comes from then goes into these machines this one doesn't have an output inserter that's why that one stopped and is, is a bit of a failure um, I need to come over here and fix that at some point um, but then these will take in the contaminated scrap and a little bit of cosmic water they wash off the scrap produce the scrap comes out and then it produces tiny tiny amounts of uranium ore and a bit of the contaminated fluids which get fed back round again so it goes round and round and round and round basically forever but the quantities get smaller and smaller and smaller and then eventually it all just essentially goes away so that it it's a, it's a happy process that does that it, it that is working apart from that one machine there that i forgot to put an inserter on <laughs> uh, yeah so that that's all pretty good as i said the bio sludge gets picked up from here that's taken off all the way over here to where we're doing the biological science it gets dropped off at a bio sludge station here and then this should then get pumped out and used by priority over any bio sludge that's made here. I don't know why that isn't running. Oh, it's in case we produce bio sludge and needs to get pumped back up again. Yeah. So this this pump runs whenever there's less than five thousand in the, in this tank. This pump runs whenever there's less than fifteen thousand in the tank. So as long as there's any in here, we'll be using this bio sludge first before we actually make any more. Um, but if we ever start to run low on it, we can always make more here. So that should always be correct always use always use up the um the recycled stuff before we make any new and that's that's the way you want it similarly the cosmic water comes up here and goes into this station and this station has a priority of 100 whereas the one over here where it's being made cleanly from new as it were has a priority of presumably zero um, I don't even know which one of these it is maybe it's this one it has a priority that's not set so the train will go to here and pick up from this station by preference when it when it needs to pick up some um, but when it needs some cosmic water and so this this all just means that the recycling 
is working as it should. Things are going quite well with that, so that's that's generally a good thing. And as you can see, all of these recycling trains are just sitting here. They're perfectly happy at the moment. And there's one that's just picked up some iron from the um, from recycling facility and is taking off to goodness knows where. So yeah, all of that is working quite well. Another thing that's been that has caused a few minor problems is up here. This this system here that, that with these rockets. So this rocket uh, launcher is set to always go to any landing pad that's called rocket parts drop, um, and when it when it fills up. And it fills up from rocket parts being dropped off here by rockets landing and bringing in the supplies we need for for this uh, for this day for this for the entire space station. Um, a problem arised uh, arose arised arose earlier when um, it was completely full and not going anywhere, despite the fact that certain places did need more. Um, I think it was Tulip needed more um, rocket parts. And it turns out that if you've got if you've got rocket landing pads with the same name on wildly different distance planets. It won't. The the rocket will fuel up enough to go to the furthest planet before it will go to the. Um, even if it only needs to go to a near planet, it won't. It won't launch until it's got enough that it could go to the furthest one. And I think it then leaves the rest of the fuel behind to be used in the next rocket. But it was at the point where it was taking so much light oil and um, probably petroleum gas to get there that it was just not taking off. So it wasn't able to fly to Tulip, even though it had easily enough fuel because it didn't have enough fuel to fly to Ganymede. So what I've done is I've renamed the landing pad on Ganymede to Rocket Parts Drop Ganymede and when this, on the occasions that this one actually does need some rocket parts, which it clearly doesn't at the moment, I shall launch one manually, probably from Norvis, and then these will this will then send all the rocket parts back as necessary. This is running very slowly. I bet we, I bet we ran out of Vulcanite on the input. Yeah, so well, as I've grumbled many many times before I don't have anything like enough Vulcanite being brought into this station I need to boost the productivity there um, but that means I need to go out to Ganymede and it's just one of those things I've been putting off and putting off but there are quite there's quite a lot of sort of yak shaving being going on as I say so it might it might be the case that I will do that relatively soon so yes it's I've done a lot of stuff. I've spent a lot of time tinkering with things and fiddling with things and grumbling at things. But I've not actually made an enormous amount of progress at this point. So, I mean, the, the main thing that's changed is I've built up this area. And as I've been talking about for the last 20 minutes, I've, I've built up lots of other things as well. and improve, but Most of that's been improvements and tweaks rather than big, new, exciting things. We'll see how that goes over the next sort of few sessions um i obviously i do want to try and carry on making stuff up as much as possible um and getting to getting everything running um so it's just a case of trying to get everything supplied at the rate it needs so standard factorio really <laughs> so i hope that's been interesting um i shall carry on making these videos of course uh still, still trying to churn them out to, to uh sorry produce them to, to a week there is the uh, the stream happening on Wednesdays and sometimes at weekends when I'm not too busy as well. Uh, so those are uh, those are always worth ch worth checking out. And we've got Industrial Revolution, uh, Factorio Industrial Revolution on Mondays as well. So that's that's another good one. Um, that's me and some friends sort of working our way through that. And at the moment we are just desperately desperately trying to stave off the biters and trying to make better weapons to let us do so. So that's proving quite difficult. As the GTA videos as well, I definitely need to plug those because those are good fun, but they're not getting anything like as, as many views as they deserve, so please go along, along and watch those. We're doing some quite exciting new stuff in there at the moment. We've moved away from just doing what GTA, what we can sort of force GTA Online to let us do and write, we started writing our own mods for it, and that's so that's making things a lot more flexible and um, well, there's a lot more potential in there that we've barely started to scratch the surface of, so definitely please check those out. They're, uh, they're, going, they're going very, very well. And of course, there'll be another one of these videos in a few days. So I hope to see you then. Thanks for watching.